qPCR primer design is a critical step for gene expression analysis. Poor design can lead to primers that anneal poorly or anneal to more than one sequence during amplification. This in turn can impact the quality and reliability of your results. NCBI Tool Primer Blast is a great tool to use for primer design. Before jumping into an example, let's cover some important parameters. For efficient amplification, design the primers so that the PCR product is between 70 and 200 base pairs long. Second, for melting temperature, as a rule, aim for a minimum of 60 degrees and a maximum of 63 degrees. The ideal primer melting temperature is around 60 degrees, with a maximum difference of 3 degrees in the melting of the two primers. And lastly, under exon intron selection, you want to design primers so that they span an exon-exon junction. Why do this? Well, to measure gene expression, you want to quantify how much mRNA is being transcribed. However, sometimes you may have some genomic DNA in your sample. One way to avoid amplifying genomic DNA along with mRNA in qPCR is to design primers so that one half of the primer hybridizes to the three prime end of one exon and the other half to the five prime end of the adjacent exon. That way the primer can only completely hybridize to mRNA and not genomic DNA as it contains introns. Now that we've covered these important parameters, let's look at an example. Say you want to measure the gene expression of the infamous gene ACE2. Go onto the NCBI website and search for the gene. Click on the gene, then scroll down until you find NCBI reference sequence. Keep in mind that there may be multiple sequences if your gene has different isoforms. Make sure you select the one you are interested in. In this case, it doesn't matter. Click on the name and on the next screen, select Pick Primers, which is on the right hand side. This will open the Primer Blast page. Now you can set your parameters. Here, change 1000 to 200. This is the number of primers the program will return. You can leave it at 10. Change 57 to 60. For exon junction span, pick primers must span exon exon junction. Under primer pair specificity, use the default setting. The program will use the RefSeq mRNA sequence from the organism you selected to design your primers. Go ahead and click on Get Primers. Just go ahead and select that, that should be fine. Click Submit. Here's the program's output page with a list of primers to choose from. This is a graphic representation of your gene and where the primers are located. Scroll down, here's the first primer pair. You have your forward and reverse primer sequence, their lengths, start and stop sites, the melting temperatures, GC percentage, aim for a GC content of around 40 to 60% to ensure maximum product stability. Avoid self complementarity when possible to decrease the possibility of a primer dimer formation. Here it tells you the length of the product to expect and then where your primers may also bind to. In this case, it's all variants of ACE2, which is fine. If they were complementary to other genes, then you want to avoid picking those primers. If you continue to scroll down, you'll find the other primer pairs returned by the program. Take a look at the options, pick the best two to three primers, order them and test them out. And best of luck. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more related content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.